Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob. This video, we're going to end the high side era in the 30 for 30 series, and we're going to end it off with deciding what is the best Godzilla high side series movie. And without even hesitating, I'm going to say Godzilla vs. Destroyer. I think, in my opinion, this is the clear cut choice. One of the reasons I think it's a clear cut choice is because Destroyer was a brand new creation and a very good creation at that. While I did like a lot of the other movies where Godzilla faced off against more traditional opponents, we had seen that before. So that kind of takes a little bit of the freshness away from those movies. And while there were other newer monsters that Godzilla fought against, I just didn't find them as good as Destroyer. Space Godzilla was basically Godzilla Evil. He was kind of like, you know, the uh, the, dop the evil doppelganger to Godzilla. And then Biollante, while is still, in my opinion, one of the most greatest creations, I got to give the edge to Destroyer because it was such a fantastic design. And the monster was portrayed, while I still remain very inconsistently, was portrayed to be very powerful, it was very large, was very devastating, and really had no qualms about just completely and utterly destroying everything. Uh, a monster like Biollante was a little bit more misunderstood. Uh, I didn't find Biollante to be pure evil more than just an animal or rather a creature that was looking to almost assimilate Godzilla in a way to kind of improve itself. Um, you know, it, it wasn't a monster that struck me as vindictive more so than maybe just trying to do its natural thing, where Destroyer just seemed vindictive at times, you know, especially after what he did to uh, Godzilla Jr. Uh, there was the only purpose for Destroyer was to basically destroy everything, you know? So, and I think the name was very fitting. It's a movie that has so many elements and so many things about it that make it very good. Uh, not only your basic monster clash, but the story behind Godzilla melting down. Uh, the f first time we really see him come to an end like this. And when you consider his anatomy and the fact that he was born from radiation and the nuclear bomb, it almost made sense that, you know, he was on borrowed time. You know, it, 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 it was almost... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? It was almost uh, poetry in the sense that the only thing that could ever kill him was himself. You know, it couldn't be humanity. It couldn't be any, any amount of weapons. It was just his, his time was up. And the ending is such a memorable ending. It's very sad, very violent ending as well. Uh, and emotional, of course, especially for, for if you were younger. Um, I remember not, I mean... As I said in earlier videos, that when I was a kid, I was very emotional about the ending for Godzilla Returns. Where Godzilla was destroyer, I thought it was sad. I wasn't emotional about it, but I was like, wow, that, that kind of sucks. But I also appreciated how they did this. They they really came out and they, they took a chance with doing that. Even though right after that, you kind of see Godzilla or Godzilla Jr. standing there. Just to kind of let you know that in some ways, Godzilla will always be around. But ultimately, this was the movie that capped off the High Side series, and I thought it was a strong ending to probably one of the best, probably the best era of Godzilla movies, because in the Showa era, you had movies that were a little bit more cheesy. You had movies where Godzilla was just strictly good. He was, like, trying to save people, trying to save kids. And in the High Side series, he was more, I guess you could say an anti-hero, but... He really wasn't. I mean, pretty much every movie, Godzilla was trouncing the cities. And he would only stop if somebody got in his way and he fought them. Or he was the lesser of two evils. He would fight a monster that was w just worse than him. And the people would stand behind Godzilla only because they knew that they, they could deal with him in certain ways that they couldn't deal with the other monsters he was fighting. Um... So yeah, I, I, I definitely think Godzilla vs. Destroyer was a, a great, great high side movie, the best in the high side series, and I also believe that it was a, a very strong ending to what I consider to be a very, very good high side era. And um, I know that's probably surprising for some people because I tend to knock Destroyer a lot, but I'm, I'm, that's in terms of talking about the monster. I don't, I don't dislike Destroyer at all. And a lot of times in the past, I've trolled you guys, you know, with the videos and stuff like that. And the only, my only argument with Destroyer has always been consistent, is that he's just not as powerful as, 
I think people think he is. You know, I think his power is very inconsistently uh, represented, and I hope he does come around to a new movie at some point, whether it's the MonsterVerse, which I'm really going to be pushing for as we head towards Kong versus Godzilla, because I do think Destroy is a good fit for the MonsterVerse. But also, even if he comes back in one of the Toho movies coming out, hopefully in, in the early 2020s, because I want to know if if there's going to be more consistency there. Because, you know, if they consistently represent him as very powerful, then, yeah, I'm on board with what everybody thinks. But if they continue to show it inconsistently where one minute he looks like he can conquer the world without thinking twice, and then the next minute he's got a monster more than twice his size and you know less than twice his size i should say in stature um you know giving him a hard time or the military giving him a hard time you know that that's just inconsistent representation so because of that i can't really be convinced that he's the most powerful i will say he is the he is very powerful at times but you know but aside from that i definitely think godzilla versus destroyer is probably the number one uh, movie for the high side era and with that said we're going to move into the millennium series going forward with uh the godzilla 30 for 30 but before we do we're going to take a pit stop and do one video or possibly two videos i can't remember i got to look at my list here but it's going to be the one or two videos as a stopgap before we start the millennium series and uh, this is a good thing because this means we're getting closer <laughs> which is very excellent so, but what do you guys think? What is, in your opinion, the best high sci era Godzilla movie? Uh, do you agree that it's Godzilla vs. Destroyer? Or is there another title you, yourself, in your opinion, is your favorite and you think is the best? Let me know in the comments below. Until the next video, this is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Thank you for watching ETN. Don't forget to subscribe and join the Nation Facebook page.